situation where it was very foggy and we were loading near a muddy uh, place or a place that we could possibly get stuck in. These cameras proved out real well in that, in that situation. They weren't real good. And so the driver was very appreciative. He, he flipped that right side camera on and he was there first time every time. No problems at all. Back in on the left side of uh, 109 shovel. Shovel operator was loading the truck on the right. Had my camera on. I noticed there was rocks trickling off the bank. All of a sudden, a couple of good sized ones came down. I chose to pull out. Luckily, I did because the whole bank came down and uh, saved the uh, back of the truck from getting damaged. Well, first, we had a couple of trucks that we had actually backed into and hit and uh, came close to turning over and did turn one of them. We had to do something to try I think that they've come to realize that there is a value to them. Being able to tell whether you've got a pickup behind you after uh, we had a fatality uh, with a 190 ton haul truck backing over one of our pickups. So I think after that, I don't think you could take them out. You can see, you can see the berms, you can see the berms. It, it's a depth perception problem with the mirrors, for me anyway. You can't quite tell, you can't gauge the real depth of where you're backing up to. And with the cameras, you can actually see when you're there. And just seeing, you know, people walking behind you, uh, trucks coming up on, behind you when you're driving, especially the small, these small pickup trucks out here. That was a nightmare. They'd sneak up on you. Look at the, the pickup of the cameras, a fisheye lens covers really well. I think it's virtually taken all of the blind spot area out um, around the truck as well as uh, real close right up to the side of the truck where um, it almost be impossible to get a mirror to uh, actually look at that area. Hi, I'm, I'm Bill Winfield. Now we all have friends that uh, we do just about anything in the world for. I mean, they're not our family, but they might as well be a, a brother or sister or, or daughter. I'm lucky to have a friend like that. John and I are, are a fit. Our souls match, our family and friendship match. wrong with this thing? Hey, John, you, you about ready to call it a day? Yeah, okay. John, uh, I'll pick you up first thing in the morning. Okay, okay, John? John, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, just thinking about the kids' schedule. First thing in the morning, sure. Hi, Janet. Uh-huh. To the game tonight? Oh, that'd be fun since Billy and Craig are both playing. Uh-huh. Can Bill make it? Great. John? I'd like to get him out of the house. Uh-huh. Uh, he's fine. Yeah. Oh, I'll call you about that later, okay? Uh-huh. He's fine. Yeah. We'll see you tonight. Thanks for everything. You guys are both great. See you later. Bye. Bill will be here any minute. Here's your muffins. That was Janet. She wanted to know if we could all go to the game tonight. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, sure. Bye. Okay. Gotta go. Here. Bless this house. Bless our family. Watch over us safely at work and at school. Thank you, Lord. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. Snow some today. Yeah, snow. Janet and Betty get everything worked out about tonight. 
it should be a good game. Uh, the team's been playing really good lately. Oh, uh, it's funny about Jack and how he can throw that football. I tell you, he certainly didn't get that from me. <laughs> well, I guess you'd know that better than anybody. John, you're the best friend I have in the world. Went through elementary school, high school, joined the Army together. Worked together for 20 years. I think I know you better than anybody else. Lately, I get the feeling you've got some big problem on your mind, and if you want to talk about it, I'm here. I didn't know it showed. It, it's my father. Terminal cancer. They, they just diagnosed him. I can't concentrate on anything. It, not the kids, not work. I've read about this kind of thing, but I never thought it could happen to me. Well, you don't have to go through something like that by yourself, brother. You're, you've got a family now, man. Uh, and if you need help, I'll be here for you. Fellas, let's listen up. For this morning's safety talk, I want to talk about the pre-shift on a 777. And one of the most important aspects of the pre-shift on a 777 is be, being aware of the blind spots that are around your 777. This chart shows the blind spots that are around a 777 from where the operator is. To the street directly right behind you. During your pre-shift, when you walk around your triple seven, you okay, John? You want to make certain number one that there are no vehicles parked around you, no mechanics truck, or number two that there are no tools anywhere near the vicinity of your truck. Come on, John. I'll take you to the job site in my truck. 